All right, for assignment one then, we're going to create this geometry, but we have some things to do first. So um, the umbrella style machines, the traditional umbrella, doesn't really lend itself to the, uh, the tool crib. We're not really going to have tools living in the, uh, the machine. But the side mount machines, as more machines become available or with the tractor uh, style, um, you know, 60, 120 tools, where we're in full up production mode, where the um, the the, um, the control at the machine will look and see if that tool is broke, and then pick another tool in the tractor, pick another tool in the uh, the carousel. Um, we're going to want to uh, to set up uh, multiple uh, multiple tool cribs that we can either define as the part number or as a family of parts. All right, so. Uh, we're going to uh, to go through that and then we'll concentrate on just the drawing tools tonight And so we still have time so that we can get the the software up and run get everything rolling We'll do the uh, the drawing tools first and then we'll program for next week And then for the lab if you want to continue on into the work holding and into some of that other foundation material We'll have you stick around for lab if you need to take off Then I'm just going to ask that you review that um, that presentation the slideshow at this point, everything should be in the maricopa.edu domain, so hopefully you shouldn't be asked for, for asking for permission. You should be able to just go to and load uh, load these files. So I'm trying to uh, make sure I know where I'm putting it so we, uh, we avoid some of those issues. All right, so um, I, I have the master cam uh, for this, uh, this computer on the projector, it jumps to 1280 by 720, so I've lost a little bit of the, uh, the screen area, the, the resolution. Um, so that, um, uh, that introductory video, that was for 2017, 2018. We're going to do kind of the same things. Maybe I won't go as in-depth, but there's a few things that I always want to point out, and we'll see if anything's changed over the, uh, the couple of, uh, of versions. All right, so the one thing that I that I noticed was, and I hadn't seen this before, so my older computers came up with the OpenGL, OpenCL error. And those are screen drivers or video display drivers that are running in the background. So they're trying to get more sophisticated as you do the um, uh, the simulations or you have the uh, the solid modeling that you have that more real view or that those better graphics. Downside is I have a really nice graphics card in my workstation, and it still shows up with, with that uh, um, uh, with that warning with that error. It seems to work, but I'm sure at some point I'm going to be rotating and it's going to flicker. Or there there'll be some little thing that since it can't calculate 100%, it'll be you know a minor, hopefully a minor nuisance. All right, so if you're getting that that error, hopefully your computers are all new. You don't ever see it, but if you if you have or you do, then I just want you to be aware of it. Move move past it, and we'll kind of identify problems as they arise. All right, so first is the uh, the configurations, and if you go to the uh, the file pull down at the bottom is the uh, configuration tab. At the top of the list is the number of decimal places at the four decimal places. Uh, we're just going to kind of cruise through these pretty quick. Line styles, um, don't really see anything in there. Uh, chaining is the process of setting the tool pass, so defining the geometry that's going to be cut, things that we're going to be doing with it. So specific to um, default chaining mode in, uh, in 3D is going to look for elements that drop down in Z. All right, if we're just drawing 2D, so our... Our main focus at uh, this point for that drawing is we don't need to draw the entire wireframe. If we draw the 2D top, we're going to be responsible for managing those depths. We've got to look at the print and say, oh, this, uh, this contour pass is going to go a quarter inch deep or it's going to go one inch deep. We set that at those values. As we get more sophisticated and build up into um, that 3D geometry, whether it's wireframes or solids, then we can pick those depths and solid work or SolidWorks uh, master cam will recognize that depth based on where it exists in that 3D model. So um, we'll stay with the 3D plane, but if it becomes a picking issue, then we'll look at coming back over to the C plane. And then chaining similar uh, colors. All right, so 
I'm not real fond of the uh, the gradient. So the gradient start is uh, I'm just going to push it over to uh, to white, and I'm going to turn off the uh, the gradient background. Pick your colors. Pick what you can can see. I've had uh, students that had um, uh, color issues. Find the best combination that works for for you. All right. When we all of Mastercam, when we hit a plus, it's going to ask you, do you want to save for this session or is this a global change? Next time you launch, do you want to see these settings again? And so yes, I do. If you choose no, the settings will only apply for this session. All right, with the um, the classroom computers and it being with Deep Freeze, you're probably going to see this reset. So one of the things we're going to do is um, identify this configuration file. So if you make a significant number of changes, we can find this kit config, put it on a flash drive, overwrite every time you come in, you just copy it over to that folder, and then the majority of these, or hopefully all of these, come, come back to you. All right, I'm going to, uh, let's expand out the colors one more. Toolpath displays, I would not make a lot of changes here um, until we get into the toolpaths and you see something specific that you'd like to change. We're just going to kind of say it's available, but let's, uh, let's hold off on doing anything. The communications are if we're going to create, um, when we go to post, and keep in mind the demo versions aren't posting, but the, um, uh, the commercial versions and our classroom version, if we were connected to a network, it would make that connection for us to the machine and spit the code out to the control. And so these are the settings that it needs to know about our network. Where is the machine on, on the network or uh, how are we communicating DNC, Ethernet, those types of things. So we would have more information here if we were on that larger scale, running through a switch, running through, uh, through a network um, uh, to make those connections. All right, and as the machines get more sophisticated, uh, my 2001 machine has the three and a half floppy drive and it has a uh, 20, 18 pin serial, 20 pin, whatever it is, serial port, and it still works fine. I'm not going to, to change it, but the newer machines with the big hard drives, the ethernet as a uh, connection, we can put those on the system and, uh, and communicate directly. Uh, solid converters going into steps and parallel solids, those that need to be the commercial or the, uh, the full-up versions. Demo, HLE is not going to do that. Um, output, and then um, we're not really dealing with too much there yet. If we set a uh, machine as the default, so a Haas control, a um, you know, whatever we're, we're using as the control, then it will come to find that rather than asking, it will go directly to that machine. So let's leave those as the defaults now. Dimensions and notes are if you are doing a certain amount of detailing drafting, maybe you drew this up quick, easy uh, to, to draw it in Mastercam, put a few dimensions on it, I need to output it so that you have some reference to it then what are those dimensions, what are those arrows going to look like? All right, so I will say let the drafting programs, the SOLIDWORKS, the Fusion, the AutoCAD even, uh, let those do the drafting because they're actually drafting programs. Let MasterCAM and the CAM programs do what they do best. And if you need a couple of quick reference dimensions, pop them in there and call it good. But this is not a uh, our full up drafting program, or at least it will. I can I, I will say it will be painful to do all of your drafting out of out of this program. All right. So more settings for the dimensions, notes, leaders, witness marks, and dimensions. The uh, file locations for everything. Uh, one of the things we would like to identify is going to be the uh, the tool libraries. So it is mil inch tool DB, and it copied it to, well, I didn't expect it to go there. Oh, yeah, I guess I did expect it to go there. So one of the things um, that uh, our IT at ASU re requested we do was um, the My Documents and even your desktop, you can uh, change the location where those files are stored. 
So I actually put that my documents into my OneDrive. If I if something happens to this hard drive, and I lose um, lose my documents off of this computer, it's automatically synced, automatically backed up to OneDrive or Dropbox or whatever your preferred um, uh, cloud drive is. So that's kind of why I'm, I was uh, I was questioning seeing the OneDrive doc uh, pop up, but then it is in my documents. There are also files that go into the public documents, which in Windows 10 doesn't necessarily show up anymore. So I'll show you how to get to those, uh, just in case uh, something uh, something uh, uh, comes up where you'll need those. All right, so Master Cam HLE for the data path. Let's see where that one opens to. And I need the full. So this did go to, looks like shared. All right, so the users, public, document, shared, master cam, 2020 mil, and tools. Whew, buried. So one of the one of the things you might want to do is uh, find a better location for that. That's usually uh, usually pretty good. Auto saving. They haven't had a lot of crashes. If you have a system that is prone to uh, to crashing, losing its mind, or you're doing a lot of three three axis, four axis, really heavy <coughs> intensive processor where there's the possibility that the system would crash, auto saving regularly is is handy. I tend to work without a net, right? So it only has to bite me once or twice before I go get the net and turn on auto save. But um, you know, it's one of those things that it, since it's a background operation, it's taking away processor time. And sometimes I even had the auto save cause a uh, cause a crash. So uh, too much going on for it. So the um, post dialog defaults. When we go to post, this is one of the screens we'll see. Do we want to send it out to an NC file? What is its extension? Or are we sending it directly to the machine? And then we have to select the machine, make that connection, and, and go through. So those are, again, some of the settings. Uh, being able to print for the, uh, for the screen. Uh, basic reports for the, uh, the setup sheet, full database. And we will talk a little bit about setup sheets. Depending on the size of the company, those can be pretty handy. It uh, takes a snapshot of each of the operations, gives you its parameters, makes a little picture of what it's doing. It's uh, it's kind of nice, but then um, it's also a, another step. So if you find it useful, we'll uh, we'll run through it. Uh, the screen settings, um, backgrounds. This is used used to be where we would find the OpenGL settings. So apparently they went from being optional to being uh, uh, mandatory. So let's see if there's anything else. All right, grid spacing. So grid is grid is optional. 0.25 is usually too dense. So if I do the uh, the spacing, I would probably go to one inch by one inch. And the origin is at zero zero. I don't typically let it snap. And the 25 is pretty much saying that we will be 12 and a half in x positive 12 and a half in x negative 12 and a half in y positive 12 and a half in x negative for most of our parts that's going to be fine when i was doing the uh the monster routers the five foot by 16 foot table i had that number pretty big so that when it picked up the um uh when it picked up my um uh my coordinate system i was kind of seeing the the, the extents of the table uh, but that just kind of has to be varied as to what makes sense. If we get much bigger than 12 and a half, we're going up to a pretty good size machine anyway. So uh, the view sheets, uh, no, that's fine. Don't really recognize anything in there that I need to do. The all important middle button wheel. All right. So if you are used to, I believe uh, it is set up by default for the AutoCAD. Going down is zoom out, and then do you want it to pan, rotate, or reverse? So that is under screen and view, and I will probably end up going back and changing that. Uh, selections, auto cursors, uh, being able to go to some of those default snaps. So right now everything is pretty much on. Uh, if we're doing a lot of arcs and circles, we might look at the uh, the quadrant, but we can f usually find that the other way. Quadrant being 0, 90, 180, 270 on the uh, the circle. Shading for solids, uh, simulation. I'm just going to kind of blow through these pretty quick. 
uh, spin controls. So when we are dealing with a wireframe or solid and we're actually trying to rotate, if we use the arrow keys on the keyboard, then what kind of increments is it going to rotate in? Uh, starting and setup. So there are the, uh, the default settings, uh, the configuration file. So I said if we go identify that file and that's where it's pulling from, then that would be the one that I would save this to and then copy it over to my flash drive. And it is um, quite a ways out there, so still in my, uh, my, in the, my documents. But we can acquire that, uh, that config file and then transport it and you know, hopefully save going through this every time. Uh, tolerances for the machining processes, they're out to a couple of tenths if you need much more than that. Um, you know, we can make the adjustment, but defaults usually work fine. Uh, the toolpath manager. So there was one. Um, these are what's going to, to show up in our groups. And there was one I was thinking that I like to change, but um, I'm going to have to find those defaults. And I think one of them was in that um, uh, in that machine um, that machine settings. All right, and then tool paths. Don't really see anything in there. All right, when we see the uh, the check marks over here, that means that I made some changes. And if we apply it, then yes, that writes it to the config file. But I still need to hit the check mark to get out of the, the system configurations. Don't want to do that just yet because at the very bottom, you can see that it is going to the MCAMX, the master cam configuration file for inch. If your machine happens to be metric, so when I ran the wiki routers, they were German machines. The native language was metric. It was a lot easier not to go through all of the conversions and, and that fight. Uh, so a lot of times I would switch it over to metric so that it was outputting native code. All right, so if you have something that's working in metric, then we'll, we'll pull that out. It automatically scales with that, that change over here. So that means you design it in standard and the output is in metric, the machine? Um, you can, yeah, but you have to, it's not one of those, check the scale that it uh, it, it should offer to um, uh, scale it up or set, scale it down your geometry, um, you know, depending on which way you're going, and uh, then it will output to metric. Because I work with both on a daily. Okay, so you're going to be going back and forth between those, and that's one of those you'll have to tinker with it a little bit. When I was doing it every day, I could tell you right off the top of my head exactly what it was going to do. Um, but that, that's where we're going to change it. That is the only place you're going to go change it is in the config file. Now, I say that, and they probably put a button up there in the, uh, the ribbon somewhere that's going to mess me up. But I always know that it's going to be here under the config. All right, so once you switch over, then uh, I think you're probably going to have to do the, the same thing as go back through these settings, see if it makes sense for number of decimal places, the, the information specific to those metric machines. Once we hit the checkbox, now we're we're out of the system configuration. That's pretty much going to be the the standard for all of our um, all of the uh, the pop up boxes. The plus applies the changes, so as you're going through, it gets uh, applied. Something happens midstream, uh, you get kicked out of it uh, for whatever reason. Going back in it at least up to those points, those those settings should be there. Then when you hit the checkbox, you're actually exiting or accepting that full uh, full group. So on the uh, the home, any questions before we um, move on? Okay, so on the uh, the home tab, then I, I'm I, the Windows uh, quick access. I'm not um, I'm not in the habit of using it, but you can add commands up here to the very top of the uh, the bar. Um, picking those, going to more commands. It's not something that's part of my workflow, but if you if it, it's something that you use, I'll show you how to do that. Um, Copying, pasting, getting an image from the uh, the screen, copies to the clipboard. Our current color, wireframe color. The uh, the solid colors, the surfacing colors, the uh, the materials. If we're going to go that far, the one that um, I use the most is clear colors. Usually, I use that one enough to put it on the right mouse button. All right. What clear colors does is as you're going through and making your selections. 
the, the object color may be in blue, but the selection color is in magenta. And then when it completes, it turns it to red. And now you've got all these different things going on the screen. If we clear the colors, it says put everything back to its default state of I want to see the nice blue and not all of these other selection sets. And then uh, we come over to from entity if we're copying and then set all if we uh, we're setting those parameters. Deleting entities and duplicates, uh, hiding and unhiding um, selected entities. I would use that one sparingly. Center points, analyzing uh, the data. I'm trying to think which one I use the uh, the most. Probably the analyze distance, but I'm more in the habit of it's either F2 or F3. I got to go back and hit those buttons again. And then the add-ins. There are. Uh, uh, scripts that you can run in the background that are specific to certain operations, and we can run those scripts with the, uh, the run add-in. The wireframe is where we're going to do all of our drawing. As long as we're drawing in that one construction plane. Right now we're in the top plane, and after all that I didn't see the grid turn on, so apparently I didn't turn it on. <laughs> all right, so pretty much wherever you see the grid, wherever you see your X, Y axes, that's our construction plane. That's the, the plane that we will be sketching this geometry in. If we go into wireframes, we're doing something much, much more complicated. Then we're looking at coming over to the planes um, options here and setting specific planes, making sure we're in those planes when we're, we're drawing. So initially, you're going to see the tool pass, but we're going to come back to that in, uh, in a minute. So the line and endpoints, whenever you click on one of these, it's going to pull up the uh, the operation. So what kind of line, directions, horizontal, vertical, those those basic parameters to be able to set our, our values. Uh, lines parallel, line closest, and then all of the, uh, the circles, arcs. Don't too, do too much in the way of splines. That, that would be more of a surfacing, getting into those complex structures. Um, doing the basic uh, rectangles, letters, and um, there's a, I'm not sure if that's the same bounding box as what comes up in the, uh, the setup. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm more of a right mouse button kind of, uh, kind of a programmer. So uh, a lot of times I don't even, I'm not even coming up to the ribbon very much. Uh, trim to uh, tenities, trim to point, trim mini, modify at intersection. Break two pieces when we start modifying, creating our geometry. Uh, dividing geometry, I think that's the one I like. We're going to go through all of them and hit some buttons and see what happens. And then joining entities is if we created line segments, but we want instead of three separate line segments, however it was in the construction, we want it to be one, we can join them back into a single entity. And then modifying the lengths, fillet entities, and under fillet entities, wherever you see the little arrows, there's going to be something else in the selection. Then we're going to um, uh, be able to grab everything in that chain. Next would be the chamfer and chamfer entities for the uh, the chains. Uh, offset for our um, our editing functions. Uh, projecting is typically we have. Uh, some type of geometry sitting above uh, a 3D surface and projecting it as where that geometry intersects that surface. So that's a little more advanced than uh, we'll probably get to. Closing the arcs and combining views, all parallel views into a single view. I haven't used that one. Refitting splines. We don't do much in the way of splines again. All right, so surfaces, solids, and model prep. Let's just kind of run through those. Mm, probably not going to do much in surfaces. We'll turn solids back on later. Model prep comes back to solids again. And then the, uh, the drafting, I'll leave it on. We're going to do a lot of transform, some machine, and the view I would like to have. So if I right-click... I'm going to customize this out to the things that I use the most. When we get over to the solids or if we're doing a lot of surfaces, then I'll turn them back on. So uh, what I find that I'm doing is when I get frustrated, I start clicking on everything, going through all of them. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. So if it's not there and I know I'm not using it, getting rid of it helps um, uh, with that little bit of, uh, little bit of frustration. 
So let's see, if we customize the ribbon, then that takes us into the options. And I think that is the same options from file all the way at the bottom options. Uh, I'm just right clicking over here, kind of up in the uh, above the, uh, the ribbon bar. And so I said, I don't want to see surfaces. I'm not deleting them. I'm not getting rid of them. I'm just not showing them. So surfaces, solids, model prep. I would like the transform to be um, to be above the uh, the drafting. And actually, I'd just like the drafting to be last. So I'm just going to do the down arrows. And it moves it down and it moves it down. So when I hit OK, so when I hit OK, now the solids, now the surfaces, those things that I'm not using all of the time, they're going to be in the background. I can still find my way to them, but they don't, um, they don't have to show up all, of, uh, all the time. All right, so the wireframe were our sketching tools and a few little modify edits. The transform is where we're going to do the heavy-duty editing. So I'm not big on the dynamic. I do a lot of translate. I do a lot of rotate. Um, move to origin is pretty handy. Mirroring, uh, offsetting entities, offsetting chains, you know, just those um, efficiently spaced geometry onto a sheet. So on one of the, um, uh, the videos, when we were doing multiple parts on a big sheet of MDF, we would do the, uh, the nesting and then stretch and scale for the, uh, for the transform. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of horsepower in those editing tools. When we come over to the machine, what are we selecting for? We're doing mill. When we go over to lathe, we'll take a, if you're interested in the wire or the router, we'll take a look uh, at those. But they're, once you have the basics of the mill, the lathe isn't that much different. It's just now you're working in the, uh, the DX or the, uh, the ZX, or I'm sorry, the, the ZD. <laughs> anyway, the diameter is in, it, it, it corresponds to X. And then um, once we pick the machine, you know, pretty much where we're uh, going to be working with the uh, the view. Uh, let's go ahead and show the axes, the nomens. I still don't know how to pronounce that. If we turn those on, you're going to see a lot of extra little um, uh, little uh, triads. So one for the um, the current view plane, one for the C plane, one for the those can get kind of confusing. So at this point, I would say leave the um, leave those off. I do want to show the grid, and so my one inch by one inch gray are going to be the the light gray little dots. I don't typically snap. I create the geometry using the parameters, and then if I snap, I'm snapping to the, that geometry. All right, um, it's. Um, you know, if we had the grid spacing at every hundred thousands, every sixteenth, every forty, whatever we were using, then maybe. But I just find it too uh, confining to dot 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 dot. I can only go dot dot. That drives me crazy. So if I'm putting in the values, then I'm going to be able to uh, to work with this. It does support the 3D mouse. So if you have a uh, traveler, a pilot, uh, whatever the thing, explorer. Um, the 3D mouse, I'll load it up, we'll take a look at it, um, and then um, that will allow you to do the other uh, rotations. And I'm going to have to brush up on the view sheets because I haven't ever really used uh, used those. On the, uh, the heads up, some of the, uh, the quick selections and snaps based on what we're doing. And selection method, if we want to pick uh, inside the window, outside the window, we can make those changes. Those are probably the main ones that I use on that display. And then inside, outside, inside plus, so a crossing, outside plus crossing, we can do all those and the intersections. Uh, verifying selections, inverting selections, those types of things. I'm not big on the, uh, the last used, but as we went through pretty much the last commands that we used are going to show up on this right side. It's just another one of those. I, by the time they added it, it was not part of my workflow. I just haven't adopted it. If you use those then take advantage of them and uh, work through the process. All right, on the, uh, the bottom, let's see if I uh, undo the, um, the docking, we can uh, go to floating. So if I had a second screen, I can take this uh, and move it around. So right now we're gonna stay with the, uh, the docking. Uh, my solids is right there next to my timer. So I'm gonna try and hide that one. 
So it gives me a little more room at the base. And since I'm not using the solids yet, I don't need to go into that, um, uh, that tab. I believe then on the customize ribbon, uh, was it on the context or was it on? No, that's the right mouse button. So we'll add something to that here in a minute or later on. I may have to just do a show all. It's uh, I can get them turned off easy enough, but then turning them back on, I gotta pull those back up. All right, so I'm gonna stay in the uh, the tool pass then. Okay, so that configuration file. Let's take a quick look at it, and we got to get the, that one sorted out. So under the documents, um, I keep my previous HLE versions. So oh, that one was supposed to be a 2020, so I, I changed the, the name. So my master cam 2020, so good for them. Um, the demo, and then the mill, and I don't see tools there. Oh, uh, no, that's the one I created. All right, so we're going to do that too. So since I'm not seeing um, seeing that path, either we haven't created it or hasn't found it yet, I'm going to go over to the, uh, the C drive and then to users and to public. And under the public documents, shared master cam 2020. Boy, these, uh, these paths. I'm going to have to make a list and I'll put it up on Canvas for you where these uh, should be. Mill and tools. And then we have the big monster library of holders and uh, different, uh, different styles of, uh, of tool list. So actually I was looking for the, uh, the configuration on that one. So let's uh, see if we can pull that back out. Under the common, I believe, customize master cam update. No. Nope. Tool data, ah, that's what I get for uh, reading it and then not writing it down or grabbing it. So mill turn, I don't see that um, MCAMX uh, config file, so let's go back over to documents real quick. Common. Mm. All right, we're going to have to go look for that one. I know where it's kind of supposed to be, but uh, it's not there. Anyway, when we find that config file, we can copy it over to, oops, let's go back to this one. All right, documents. I wanted that whole path. It's the AMX config. All right, we'll give it one more shot and then we'll move on. So I got the documents, I got to the master cam. So I'm gonna check 2018 real quick. There's the config, but nope, didn't uh, didn't keep it. All right, I will have to uh, put that one up on Canvas for you. All right, so the um, the other one that I was interested in, oh, if I zoom out, so I'm using the uh, the middle mouse wheel. And um, we're setting this, um, uh, scrolling out far enough, I'm able to see the 25 by 25 grid. So as you're, as you're drawing, kind of work through, uh, through those. All right, so to get to the, um, the tool list inside of um, the Mastercam software, I'm going to show you the tool manager, which I think will be a little bit uh, easier once we get it set up. We're going to, uh, to manage the list first. And right now, all we have is the defaults. So that uh, controls and posts that um, I have in the zip file, that's where we'd like this to, uh, to show up. Previous versions gave us quite a few more uh, choices. So we'll, um, let me know if you um, have a, a specific machine that you'd like to, uh, to look at. And we'll, uh, we'll see about getting that loaded. And I think the, um, the, the full version that gets installed on the class computers is going to have a little bit a uh, little bit longer list. All right, so the uh, default MM is millimeter for metric. That should switch um, uh, with the other. And then the default is inch. And when I add it and go ahead and hit OK, 
now we can go back into mill and it's going to show up as one of the uh, the standard you know one of our um, uh, go-to machines can you go back about 20 seconds? <laughs> All right, so this is being recorded. You can pause it and we'll we'll play it uh, play it over. So we got about um, I'm going to give about another 10 minutes and then we'll, we'll we'll we can run through that again if we need to. Once you pick the machine, mill, lathe, wire, then you're going to get the operations for those um, um, for for that uh, that specific machine. So the contour, the drill, uh, the different processes and what I'm looking for initially is the tool manager All right, so one of the things I want to point out with the tool manager is we can save those tool libraries out but it's always going to show up mill inch tool library and this is the complete list of everything you never wanted to, to know about every tool that's in the database the tools that are up here in the machine group uh, under machine group one that is specific to this um, uh, to this uh, file to this part. Right? So as we add those tools and go through the process, if I have a tool library that I want to retain, then I'm going to need to save it back out to its own file to its own library file. So filtering through and getting used to the tool manager is the sooner the better. We cannot uh, uh, manage tools. Uh, earlier often enough. All right, so right now we're looking at everything and if I scroll, I'm going to be scrolling for a while. All right, so we filter and under the filter, we're going to go to none. Right now with all selected, we're seeing absolutely everything. So when I select for a tool crib, usually, uh, so like the, the side mount, I want a group of tools for aluminum to live inside of that machine and the only time I'm going to uh, to really take them out is to inspect the tool holder um, they're getting dull I broke one but other than that they're going to live inside of that um, that side mount tool changer so a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm picking the um, the end mills first and I guess it would help to make the filter active so when the filter is deactivated unchecked we're seeing all the center drills. As soon as I activate it, now we're looking at the standard drill uh, end mills. So I select a half inch, and it, it always kind of varies. Depends on if I'm doing a lot of bigger, bigger parts, but I might start with a three quarter. But typically, three quarter and above is something that I'm going to add later. All right, so I do the up arrow, and right now we're set that it's pulling the tool number uh, current but we haven't added it to an operation yet so there's something else that we just got to got to be aware of that uh, 290 number is not set in stone when we actually bring it into a program bring it into its operation then we're going to tell it tools one tool two three tools four whatever we go through or if i save this back to a tool crib and i'm going to reuse this then i'm going to go back in and number these so we'll get them in first and then we'll come back and uh, see what it does all right, so the next one, I always debate whether I want the uh, the three eighths. Um, so basically, eighth inch increments. These would be the most common ones that I use. I do like the three sixteenths, and for the small work, an eighth inch. So I just go ahead and grab them. And I, you know, if I find that uh, I'm not using them much, I can always pull it out of the uh, the tool crib and replace it with something else. Uh, another one that I would uh, I would like is the uh, the facing mill. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Slot? No, uh, probably not. Chamfer. Um, so things like um, the uh, the tap drills, the taps, those are going to be part specific. So after I get my default, these are the most common tools I run. Then once I have the part open and I see, oh, we've got a bunch of 1032s, we've got a bunch of M6 by, uh, by 1Os. Then I'm going to go in and specifically set for the the tap drill and the the tap or the pilot drill and the reamer or those those types of things. So uh, let's just go with the face mill and see what we have. And so um, if I go with a three inch face mill, that'll get it close enough. Even if it is for the um, like a, a fly cutter, it gets me started. And then that uh, that chamfer mill is usually handy for deburring. 
um, doing uh, some basic engraving. So I'll switch over to the chamfer mill, see if there's anything, and either the quarter or half inch. Let's go with a quarter inch uh, for now. And it's coming up in, in order, so we'll call that good. All right, so at this point, I've got them all in the mix, and the numbers came in with their sequence of numbers. So if I double click, then we're going to uh, hopefully find those, uh, those numbers. So half inch was number one. When I change it, it should update. And as we're going through, do I know what my surface feet per minute is? The other thing is, am I on a 10,000 RPM spindle machine, a 7,500 RPM, a 6,000, a 4,000? If I'm setting this up to be an aluminum tool set, for the, the TMs, then my max RPM is 4,000. I'm gonna be better off setting um, these uh, spindle speeds and feed rates based on what we're gonna run so it maxes out. If I put in, um, if I have a 10,000 RPM spindle, hey, max RPM uh, for a half inch tool, I would probably run it at 9,000, 9,200, 40, 45 inches a minute. Aggressive cut. I have to be aware of how aggressive I'm telling this to be because these are now going to be the defaults for that tool. So let's say we're setting up for the TM and we'll stay on the gentle side, 4,000 RPM, 12 to 18 inches a minute. Um, yeah, let's go with 12. Plunge rates uh, will stand 12 and the retract rate at 12. And number of flutes for this tool is either going to be two or three. Let's go with a three flute. And the surface feet per minute on a uh, carbide half inch um, uh, tool, let's stay at about 800. All right, so notice what happened is that when I put in 800 with a feed per, do per tooth of seven and a half tenths of a thousandth, all right, so 75 millionths, yeah, I don't want to do that math. It updated my feed rate and it didn't bother with the plunge rate or the, the retract rate. So as you enter values in one, it back calculates and updates the, the values. So if I was really happy with my 12, then 800 surface feet per minute changes it to six and a half for the feed per tooth. If we wanna go as far as the manufacturer, uh, tool codes, tool grades, we can build that in. And when we put out the, uh, the setup sheet, I think we can, uh, can check those boxes to um, uh, put it in. The uh, rough and finish tools, X, Y step percentages. So by default, how much it's going to engage, radially engage the tool into the, uh, the part. And then when we finish, we'll go through. Now it's tool number one. All right, so um, we're getting a little close on, uh, on time here. So let's go ahead and create a new tool library. I would go through each of these and make those adjustments, get it to where I wanted it. And then when I create a new tool library, um, let's see, I had that other one open, but now I gotta find it. The 2020, and I'm gonna give this um, the TM for the machine, and this is gonna be for aluminum. All right, some designation that is specific to this set. Now I can copy these and make adjustments if I'm gonna be very similar for a steel or a stainless steel or even titanium. You know, we go up into the exotics and I say, I want the same group of tools, except I'm going to be dealing with four and five flute or roughers or, you know, whatever we need to run. I can make those adjustments a little easier rather than going through and making all those selections again. All right. So if I save that, we now have an empty tool set. I can hold down the shift select. So standard windows operation, have the first one selected, hold down the shift. And then I'm going to send, well, maybe not. <laughs> it sounded good. Which one did it pull? Uh, similar tool is already in. Oh, thank you. Yep. So I already got the duplicate. All right. So in that case, I always do that too. <laughs> we right click and we can go back and delete the tool, confirm the de deletion. And then when we kick this out, then it should ask me if I want to save back to the tool library, save it to the current library. Now, when I go in and I make my selection, I'm still kind of going back and forth between those libraries. 
But if I start a new part and uh, we go back into the tool manager, either from the operation or from the, uh, the grouping, I can navigate to that, uh, that file. So ultimately, I'm going to want to put this file in with the rest of them, but probably give it a name that puts it at the top. So like a mil inch <laughs> or number one mil inch, number two mil. Anyway, so it gets it to the top of that folder so I don't have to search down through for it. And then I can grab all these, put them up, and then we're back having to switch back over to our common tools, the mill inch default library, to go in and select drills, to go in and select center drills, taps, those types of things. So it's just a different way of, of, um, of navigating. If we have an extensive enough tool library, we can build common tools that we're using into this library, much like the default mill inch. But I'd really like to be able to bring this in and be ready to go. This is what's loaded into the machine, and I don't have to think about it. The feeds and speeds and all those parameters, they're you know pretty much fire and forget. Now I'm I'm, I'm going to make adjustments, and I'm going to observe what it's putting into each of the operations, and make adjustments as needed. But 90% of the time, I'm expecting it to be there. If not, I'm coming back to this tool library and saying, you know, that really didn't work out. 12 was was too slow. I want to bump it up to 18 or I want to go from 12 to, to 10, right? Make those adjustments so that this becomes more seamless and I'm getting more results out of uh, each process. All right, so to close up, uh, there is one more and I want to see how this uh, reacts. Uh, outside of uh, Mastercam then, and you have to run Mastercam at least once to activate the tool manager. I created that other tool library real quick just to, to see what it would do. And so this is kind of a standalone, um, maybe a little bit uh, quicker. And what I was not able to, um, to see or was um, being able to pull up, if we go to the open, and I grab that uh, tool library that I just uh, created. Here is kind of the, uh, the default. So cutting tools expecting to come up this is a more tabulated more you know kind of excel look um, to our uh, to our grouping and as it comes across it's a, a slightly different way of approaching it if i needed to add a group or uh, add the uh, the tools or i wanted to add holders make full assemblies and for two and a half axis i'm really not concerned about collisions with the holder um, even the, um, you know, going up to the full tool assemblies, holder and tool in, in a group, until I get over to three axis where there might be some interferences, four axis where I'm bouncing around a rotary going, wow, I really hope I don't hit anything, I don't want to run into anything. Uh, five axis, absolutely. As we build up in there, these are going to be more functional. All right, so I've given you enough of a task to kind of prepare your tool crib, Find out what's useful for you. Go through those uh, those steps. Become familiar with it so we can take advantage of it right out of the gate. All right. So a little bit more that we can uh, we can work in and work from in the uh, the tool manager. And uh, as I use this a little bit more, I really wasn't even aware that it was in 2018, so I didn't adopt it. But it's one of those anything that gives us a better graphic and um, a faster way of adding creating these tool libraries. I'm all for. All right, so I'm going to close this um, recording.